Trump has been, uh, well, he's been rather vicious about Ron DeSantis. Of course, we know they're the two front runners for Republican uh, candidate for 2024. And... Trump just keeps taking pot shots. Have a look. They keep saying, oh, I think DeSantis can do okay with farmers. I don't think so. Based, based on polls, he's not doing okay with anything. It's also not good when you look statistically at how he did on COVID. Not well at all. He's in a very bad position. Now, we all know why he's doing it. I think the people who've turned out there to watch him know why he's doing it, but you still saw there. There wasn't much support. There wasn't the cheers. Uh, how do you think this uh, campaign of him, his to diminish Ron DeSantis, is going? Because though a lot of the polling shows he is the preferred... Trump is the preferred candidate among Republicans... Um, They've got very similar bases. So when he has a go at Ron DeSantis, the people in the crowd there probably don't like what they're hearing. They don't. They want to see him go after, you know, the usual foes yeah. uh, and not do this. But, you know, that's the system. That There's a primary he has to get through and he's making a calculation. I always say there's three segments of Trump supporters. About half, 40 to 50 percent of them are the diehards. And nothing he says will sway yeah. them. This is, you know, his famous comment, infamous comment. I could shoot somebody on Fifth Avenue and they'll never leave me. <laughs> uh, there's the other like 10 to 15 percent that are fascinating that are the early adopters and they were early in, early out. So they actually really liked what Trump stood for in the beginning. They feel like he didn't go far enough when he was governing and they have for the most part shifted over to DeSantis. They won't like this. And then there's that last bit of 30 to 40 percent that are the fence sitters and they like both of them. They don't like to see them go head to head. It's uncomfortable. But um, that's the one I think to watch in terms of where where he ends up if he runs and if DeSantis, you know, if and when he finally declares, it's that 30 percent or so that are open-minded to both. They don't like this. But there's so many things playing into this. As you know, a week is yeah. a lifetime in politics. And so we'll see, you know, how that Some out. people do say, though, that this system that's there where you've got the Democrats and the Republicans just tearing strips off each other to, to get over that hurdle to be the candidate, that it actually is... Uh, in many ways, a good training ground. Because if you're going to go into a presidential race, you need to be battle-hardened. Mm -hmm. And whether it's DeSantis or Trump, they're going to be battle-hardened after this because this is going to be a, a an enormous clash. These are two very um, strong personalities. And you would have to say Ron DeSantis uh, is almost a perfect politician, the perfect conservative politician. He really doesn't have any chinks in his armour. He doesn't um, yet. They will find something, you know, when he goes for that battle hardening. Every, first, you know, Trump is going to take his blow towards to him, which has just yeah. begun. And then secondly, if he is chosen, uh, the left wing media and the mainstream media is going to also take their blow towards to, Oh, to that, that, they're already doing that. They're I mean, in that. the eyes of the left, he, I mean, um, he's been c compared to... Hitler and Mussolini. I mean, they've all that got stuff held gonna, back. Is gonna happen. But it, as far as a conservative voter, someone who would consider voting for him right now, yeah, there's 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 not too many weaknesses there to exploit.